we will continue with um, some pitfalls and uh, tricks how you can generate quote unquote non standard head models such as animal and patient with prominent neurological uh, peculiarities. Um, so, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Katie Mantel. I'm a PhD candidate in Alex Opitz's lab. Um, and yes, as Iwan said, I'm talking about creating non standard head models today. Um, so quickly, for model building, we typically start with an MRI. Um, from that, you generate masks. From the masks, you create triangular um, surfaces. And from the surface, we're able to create tetrahedral meshes. Um, with SimNibs, um, you have a couple pipelines already included, MRI to mesh, which is the old version, and HeadRico is the newer version. And then hopefully later this year or early next year, another new pipeline is gonna come out and each time improves upon this method. And this works really well for um, what I'll call a typical um, human uh, model that you wanna build, but problems do arise when you have non-standard models. So if you have a human with pathology, in this case, um, this person had a, a stroke lesion. Um, um, so here's a, a large lesion that, you know, where you would expect to see gray matter and white matter is now just a, a void. Um, typically we consider that to be filled with CSF, but, um, and so when I ran this MRI through Hedrico, this was the result. And so clearly this part should not be considered gray matter. And so that's why we need to do hand edits. Um, at this point, I do want to pull up this real quick. So Hedrico, um, if you are doing something like a pathology, Hedrico does allow you to do manual editing. So you can run your MRIs through Hedrico, and then you can edit your masks by hand, and then you can rerun Hedrico from a later point using surface mesh and volume mesh um, to recreate the mesh. And it still takes care of all of the, the steps. And so if you can get away with using this, I would highly recommend it. Um, I don't believe you can use CAT12 for this. Um, but that being said, it's, it does a lot of the work. You have to do a little editing yourself and then you can continue on and make a usable head model. Um, however, there are cases, um, for instance, if you were listening to many of the talks yesterday, there's a lot of people working with non-human primates, people working with mice and rats and so those will not run through Hedrico to begin with. So those you'll have to either use other pipelines that are available um, or do the whole thing from, uh, from scratch. And right now we are working with um, a couple of groups to try and make it so that um, there can be like automated non-human primate segmentation, but it's still a work in progress and we're working towards that. Um, Okay, so quick um, overview of how surface meshing in GMesh works. So GMesh understands how to fill in a volume as long as you have a closed surface. And so it can fill in that surface with the tetrahedra to make a, a, a volume, or it can, can um, fill in tetrahedra between two closed surfaces um, or two or more. And so if we look at this, this is a simplified brain, if you will. Um, this innermost ring would be the ventricle, then the white matter, gray matter, CSF, skull, and skin. And what it can do is it can say, okay, here's a ventricle and I can fill that in um, with volume and all of that's gonna be ventricle. And then it can take the white matter surface and say, okay, everything between the white matter surface and the ventricle surface is now going to be white matter volume. And then the gray matter surface to white matter surface is now going to be gray matter volume and so on and so forth until we have the full head model. 
But the real key here is that we need these nested surfaces. So everything has to be contained within um, one surface. You can't have anything that's going to protrude out of another surface because then um, GMesh is not going to know, well, is it, you know, if you need to um, fill in between gray matter and white matter and white matter sticking out, it's not going to know how to handle that. It will have an error and you will not be able to create a mesh. Um, in the case of um, one plus other, um, other closed surfaces, you can have something, for instance, eyes. And so skin then becomes, skin volume is everything inside the skin surface, but outside the skull surface and outside the eye surfaces. And so it can handle those types of situations as well. Um, when I go through making these non-standard head models, these are the tools that I'm typically using. ITK Snap is a um, uh, open soft, uh, open source software, I believe. And so that's where I do my hand segmenting and I can directly export my STL files from the masks that I create. FSL is optional and it, it's not available for Windows, but I often use um, FSL maths for um, adding multiple masks together or dilating a mask and adding that um, or even subtracting. So if I have a lesion mask, I can easily subtract that from for instance, that gray matter mask that you saw that had extra gray matter label over the lesion itself. Mesh fix um, is a really important tool and it, it's a tool that comes direct when you download synonyms directly. Um, and so we can use this to remesh a surface so it has uniform node density. Um, we can smooth things, we can decouple surfaces. So this one's really important. And then finally, GMesh, it use, we use this to actually create the 3D head model. Um, it does the volume filling for us and um, use it for visualization. Okay, so uh, creating and editing masks and surfaces. I'm going to come here. So quickly, just ITK snap. We open a main image, which is your MRI. Um, and then segmentation, we can open a segmentation mask, for instance. Oh, we'll do gray matter. And so um, I happen to like this tool quite a bit. It's very straightforward and easy to get going with. Um, it also, down here, it shows you in 3D what's happening when you're working on a 2D surface. Um, and so in here, you can do all sorts of things with like brushes. Um, you can use different types of labels and the goal is really to cover all of gray matter with um, this label. And so here you can see that this is uh, pretty much done. And then in the end, we can export it as a surface. I only have label one. I can call this gray matter and export as an STL. So that makes it really, really simple to go from our mask to our STL file. Um, and you can also start pretty much from scratch from there as well. So if you don't have anything, you can paint over that and create the STL file. Now, once let's assume that we have um, our surfaces done um, from ITK Snap. Now we are going to do some remeshing. And so this is just a very brief overview of kind of steps that I usually take. Um, so using mesh fix, I do a uniform um, surface. And so I give it the input surface. I tell it then, um, which is uniform remeshing, how many steps I use. And then I like using the vertex density, um, it, the head Rico default, for 
for instance, uses this and uses a, a value of 0 0.5, and then we can save it again as an STL file. Um, and this just makes sure that our triangles are out nice. Um, you don't want ones that are really small or really, uh, really small angles, really should be as uniform as possible. Now, if it happens to fail, and it, it will fail sometimes, um, you can do a quick step in the middle, which is mesh fix, where you remove spikes. Um, re mesh fix recommends the value of 5.5 .5 for this T. Um, and I found that that works quite well. And then you will go back and rerun the previous step with the, the uniform remeshing and desire. Once we've kind of smoothed out all of our surfaces, um, then we, can, we need to make sure everything's decoupled. So like I mentioned previously, we cannot have any overlapping sections of our surfaces. So if we have one, this blue surface and then this inner orange, um, if it's sticking out of blue, you cannot tell GMesh that blue needs to be inside the blue border and outside of orange, you have this spot that makes no sense. And so you need to take care of that. Um, and then just general note, you typically decouple from the innermost surface to the outermost. Um, so when we're talking about heads, typically that would be ventricles from white matter, then you'll do white matter from gray matter, gray matter from CSF and all the way up to skin. Um, mesh fix is also um, what I use to check if there are intersections and to take care of any of these um, things that need to be de decoupled. Um, when you are checking for intersections between two surfaces, you give surface one and surface two. This part is really important. You need to tell it that there are two shells, which are the two surfaces that you're working with. Otherwise, it will not work and it will tell you that everything's good, even though it's not. Um, if there are no intersecting, intersecting triangles, those surfaces are completely decoupled and you're good to go. Um, but if they're not, MeshFix has a couple decoupling options. And so these are the ones that I typically use. Dilate, um, decouple in-in, decouple out-out cut outer and cut inner. So dilate is what it sounds like. You can either inflate a surface or deflate it a little bit. Um, decouple in, in and out, out. You kind of move um, triangles. Um, and I don't really have time to go over the details of these, but um, there's a lot of information um, if you just in your command line type mesh fix, and then there's details about what all of these do. And then cut outer and cut inner is just going to cut out those pieces that are overlapping and then fill in the holes. So, um, but one thing to note, the order of your input files is extremely important. Um, and cause that does change what's happening with the, uh, the de decoupling and the cutting. And finally, we now have all of our surfaces um, decoupled. And so we can create the final 3D model. And we do this with geofiles, um, which are essentially instructions for GMesh. And it takes in all of our STL files. Um, it, create, it tells GMesh what are the surfaces and volumes. Um, and so that's how we were talking about that, for instance, gray matter volume is inside the gray matter surface, but outside of the white matter surface. Um, and you can also combine um, various surfaces and volumes into a single joint surface and volume. So ventricles and CSF, for instance, are often treated as a single surface and volume um, because then when we're uh, running simulations, we only have to set the connectivity for CSF one time. And so that's, that's handy. Um, and finally, once you have the geo file set, then you just run this command. Yeah, I just pulled up a, a quick example of a geo file. Um, and so in here, we're telling it what STL files to use, 
we're defining our surfaces, our volumes, and then we can also, for instance, this is where we're merging our CSF and ventricles um, uh, for both surfaces and volumes. And so that's, you know, it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but I would recommend if you have access to an MRI, a human MRI, run things through Hedrico and then um, kind of see how things go. They should have a geophile output. And so from there, you can kind of copy that general um, structure that's there and just update it for whatever you need. Um, and then I don't, in the end, You end up with a cool mesh. that has a lesion and everything worked out. So that, that's all, just a very quick overview.